some places in America actually um, are thinking about putting that cost of Medicaid onto the counties and the local governments. Well, they already do. Two states in the nation uh, already push down the cost of Medicaid to cities and counties. And so the um, interesting news from Politico yesterday was that a congressman, I believe his name is uh, Anthony Weiner, is considering running for mayor of New York. And he said that uh, the cost to New York City, which has responsibility in their state, is going to be enormous, to use his word. So he's looking for a waiver from the provisions of the new health care legislation that we call Obamacare. Is this anything you've heard any Texas lawmakers going to try to do? Yes, there's a, a bill right now applying for a waiver, but in Texas, instead of uh, trying to address the situation just through waivers, there are a couple of other measures working their way through. One is called uh, the Health Care Freedom Act, which gives the state a constitutional exemption, a state constitutional exemption from forcing any of its residents to have to buy health insurance. Uh, another is an interstate compact, which we are strong proponents of because we believe it's a long-term solution to a failed program. Uh, and the health care compact uh, is kind of a unique idea. It would require two or more states, anywhere between two and 50, to pass similar legislation that would then go directly to Congress and Congress would have to act on the provisions. It's used in a lot of other ways, but it's never been used to restore the balance between the federal government and the state government and the people. So we propose to use an interstate compact, say, give us our federal money back that is currently being spent on Medicaid and let us design our own program. And we have also come up with a program design that would be much more free market. It would allow people to receive a subsidy, or a subsidy would be sent to the insurance company on their behalf for those who are, are poor, and would continue to provide uh, wraparound benefits for long-term care services and supports like nursing homes, group homes, and continue to take care of the people that can't take care of themselves. We believe we can cover more people for 95% of the money that was covered, that was spent in 08, 09. So there are ways to do it, but the current system is broken. It is not delivering quality care. It is bad for the recipient. Uh, it is very bad, very, very bad for the state's budget. You were just talking about nursing homes. Now that we have uh, the possibility of maybe 1.8 less in cuts because of the rainy day fund money they've decided to use in the current biennium. Uh, what are you seeing for the future of nursing homes uh, in the next biennium? Well, and it's not just nursing homes. It's long-term care supports and services, as they are called. Uh, it's nursing homes. It's uh, home health care, you know, care in the community. It's taking care of the, the disability community the group homes that I'm sure a lot of your listeners are very familiar with group homes. Uh, all those community services are also being hurt because of the, of the cuts. And uh, so our, our point at Texas Public Policy Foundation is why are we stuck with this antiquated system that was designed and I might add poorly designed back in 1965 that is not working and our projections are that next session they will be looking at spending 46.6 percent of the entire state budget on that one program. It's astounding and it's broken, it's unsustainable, and we can do better. We can do better for Texas, but we need freedom from the restrictions of the federal government, particularly from Obamacare, which just makes a bad situation worse. If you're predicting that for you know the next biennium, what do you expect that we should do right now to maybe try to at least prevent part of that cost? Well, we've got to we've got to reform the program. It's too big of a problem to just tweak around the edges, you know, just nibble around the the outside of it. It's got to have uh, it's got to be fundamentally reformed, and so the state of Texas must find a way to accomplish that. And there are, uh, there are two or three ways that could happen. Uh, if we can get this interstate compact passed, uh, and if Congress would, would ratify that, then we would have the freedom 
to be able to design our own program. Uh, another way is through a waiver. Uh, there's a waiver called uh, Section 1115 Demonstration Waiver, and that, that's kind of a short-term fix, but at least it's a fix. But we've got to employ the free market principles uh, and employ personal responsibility along with personal choice, getting the patient back into a financial relationship uh, with the program. Right now, it's Medicaid is 100%. It's all or nothing. And we believe there should be a sliding scale so that those who need the most help receive the most help. And those, as they start working their way up the income ladder, then uh, they start paying more and more and more. And there, there are many advantages to that kind of a system. And it's used in other areas. It's used in a lot of hospitals, indigent care programs. Uh, sliding sales, scales are good things. Personal responsibility is, is a good thing um, and allows more help to more people. I know you helped to bring forth uh, several reforms whenever you were a lawmaker in this in the healthcare area. I mean, why do you feel like we're still where we are uh, with so many, you know, financial problems, staffing problems, resource problems? Well, it, with Medicaid, it is a jointly funded program. It is uh, part of it. Part of the funding comes from the federal government. Part of it comes from the state. Right now, it's a little bit less than 60, 40, 60 federal and 40 state. But uh, all the rules, all the important rules are set at the federal level. States have very little flexibility, very, very little flexibility. Uh, so this 50-year-old program is antiquated and has uh, continued to consume more and more and more of the state's budget. Um, and as I said, it, it's just unsustainable for the, for the next years that we're looking forward. So the question is not if we're going to reform, but when we're going to reform. And we, we think the sooner the better because the people of Texas deserve better and the taxpayers deserve better and the people who are receiving the help deserve better. So um, it's time for that to occur. And we believe that the states are the innovation. We're, we're the innovators. You know, back in the 90s, we had welfare reform, and that came from the states and was pushed up to the federal government. Uh, we see the same thing happening now. This interstate compact that I spoke of has already passed one or more houses in uh, several states. We're expecting to come out of this legislative session with uh, somewhere between five and 10 states passing this interstate compact saying, give us our money, let us design our own. What about the fact that the governor has been talking about block grants when we're speaking about Medicaid? You know, the interstate compact would in effect be a block grant. It would just have fewer strings attached uh, than the current block grant uh, scheme would allow. And block grants, we're all in favor of block grants. We're in favor of anything that puts Texas in charge of Texas. 